People used to take walks outdoors to relax. Today, people watch Netflix or scroll through Instagram. Technology is changing the ways in which people interact with each other and with the environment. Diane Ackerman's Natural Pixelated addresses this topic. Technology impairs our memory and creates a distraction that does not allow us to fully engage in the purity of nature. Hello, my name is Raquel Mazriego, and the purpose of this film is to enlighten you on some of the effects technology is having on our relationship with nature. I'm going to start off by introducing you with two college students who are friends, Lily and Jack. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I want to take a picture. I'm going to do. What are you doing? Get in the perfect shot for Visco. What's Visco? Visco is an application where people can edit and share their artsy or cool pictures. Here we go. Hold up, I'm editing. Okay, maybe if I just add a little purple hue, that looks perfect. I'm just gonna adjust the exposure. That's my, very good. That looks great. Wow, that looks that's a great Visco shot. I'm gonna upload it. Rainbow upload. Done. Where'd you go? Man, that test was so hard. I only have five republishes. How did you get? I didn't post it. Why? I don't know. I didn't want to. It's for me. Weird. Wait. Did you really not post it? No. Like, why not? Life isn't about posting pictures and editing them and showing others. You can keep them to yourself. But like, yeah it is, and what good is a photo if no one else can see it? Well, I learned in teaching. That we can form close and special connections with people and nature if we are not constantly preoccupied by technology. Once arriving in Fiji, there was no cellular service or Wi-Fi. At first I was annoyed. However, these ended up being some of the greatest and most memorable weeks of my life. The lack of the distraction from my phone allowed me to fully connect with this new place. I remember so much about all of the people I met and the breathtaking landscapes and nature around me. I did take pictures so that I could show my family and friends when I got home, but there was no pressure to post these pictures and impress others. Without my phone, I was able to fully live in the moment. I created meaningful relationships with the people and with the environment I was in. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Jack. Isn't my cousin's new baby so cute? Yes. See what I mean? Jack, are you studying? I already studied. Then I'll quiz you. Go ahead. When was D-Day? 6th of June, 1947. I think it was 1944. Now, when did Germany reunify? I don't know. I remember looking this up the other night, though. I'll, I'll look it up. You don't need to look it up. They reunified 3rd of October, 1990. Okay, good. Next question. And this time, don't look it up. Are you in for a study break? Okay, I know this place we can go to a walk and see a river. I go there to relax. Is it a pretty river? Yes, very pretty. Photographic? Yes. Good. Let's go. Technology is also changing the way our brains process and store information, and our memories are being affected due to the availability of the internet. Diane Ackerman explains that studies have shown that Google is affecting our memory in chilling ways. We more easily forget anything we know we can find online, and we tend to remember where online information is located rather than the information itself. In Jack's case, he couldn't remember the specific date in which Germany reunified, yet he could remember that he did look it up online, and he knew where he could find it online again. Jack, look. It's the river. Look! Water's so dirty. It's not good enough for Visco. It's so pretty. It's dirty. It's relaxing.
can't get a good picture. You don't need a picture. We came here to get a good picture. We said it would be pretty. Relax. We're on study break. Disco. It's worth it. In sum up it all, technology and social media provide a constant distraction that prevents people from focusing on where they are and living in the present moment. As Diane Ackerman says, nature now comes to us, not the other way around, on a small glowing screen. Five republishes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? No, don't look at me. Isn't it so pretty? Look. Dad, go. When was D-Day? June 6, 1944. You're not. <laughs> Jack, you have to study. No, I don't. Wait. <laughs> 